Mitsubishi has gone to town with this fifth generation L200 pickup, completely redesigning the engine, the suspension, the steering and the transmission. And that's just the start. It's more aerodynamic, better equipped, nicer to sit in and much more efficient. Plus, it's great off-road, and if you tow, this vehicle will lug more about than any other rival can. You can see why buyers like it. So here we are with the pickup that, according to its makers, shows the world how it's done. The fifth generation version of Mitsubishi's L200. Never before, claims Mitsubishi, has a vehicle been launched that leads its class in so many ways. Total payload capacity, four-wheel drivability, performance, maneuverability, driving refinement, the list goes on. In short, this L200 may look similar to its Series 4 predecessor, but the truth is that it's been redesigned from the ground up in order to maintain the brand's dominance in the pickup segment. That's long established. Globally, Mitsubishi has six decades of pickup production experience and has sold well over four million of them, mostly L200s, a model range first launched way back in 1982. It was a Series 3 third generation version we first saw in 1996, though, that really hit the big time for this Japanese brand, a model since credited with the rejuvenation of the entire market segment. It was the first to recognise that the pickup uh, needn't merely be a utilitarian workhorse fit only for farmers and jobbing builders. The Mark III model L200 could be dressed up to look and feel more like a lifestyle SUV, and a very cost-effective one at that. Tax loopholes just after the turn of the century not only allowed businesses to reclaim VAT on the purchase price, but also enabled company car users to pay a flat tax rate that gave them big savings. And Mitsubishi found themselves with the one vehicle in the sector that could take full advantage. Customers flocked to the company's showrooms, and at one point, the brand was taking 70% of sales in this class. Since then, though, things have changed a little. The tax laws have tightened, and so has the competition, but pickup buyers tend to like to stick with what they know, with the result that the Series 4 L200 model, launched in 2006 and updated in 2010, still led sales in the segment by a healthy margin for most of its lifetime. By 2015, though, another step forward was needed, hence the effort that's been put into making sure that this Series 5 model provides it, with significant improvements in over 330 areas. It is, we're told, once again, number one for a reason. If that's true, then we'll find out why as we put this vehicle to the test. Pickup manufacturers have long told us that their models are just like SUVs to drive, but usually that claim falls well short of the truth. Inevitably so, given that vehicles of this sort must feature old-fashioned rear leaf springs in order to accommodate the heavy loads that they might be called upon to carry, and separate ladder-framed chassis for ultimate off-road prowess. Until that changes, a pickup will always feel clunkier and more utilitarian on the road than a car-like SUV, so don't believe any brand that tells you differently. With that said, though, there's no reason why the experience offered up by this kind of vehicle can't be fine-tuned for more universal acceptance, and that is exactly what's happened here. Put simply, this Series 5 L200 model is easier to drive, uh, more refined and more comfortable than any other pickup that we've driven to date. One reason why is down to improvements in ride quality. True, potholes and speed humps are still acutely felt, but they don't cause the whole cabin to shudder in the way that they did in the previous Series 4 model. More to the point, at speed, tarmac imperfections are discarded with far more disdain than they would be in, say, uh, a rival Toyota Hilux or a Ford Ranger. Of course, as with any pickup, the ride quality will improve if you're loaded up at the back. Uh, drive quickly while unladen down a broken road and the thing shudders dramatically in a way that an SUV never would. Adjust your speed, though, and the experience can be, well, quite bearable. You don't, after all, expect a magic carpet ride from uh, this kind of vehicle. You don't expect pin-sharp handling either, and, of course, you don't get it. Start throwing any pickup about and you'll quickly discover its prodigious body roll and tyre-squealing limits. 
get too heavy on the power or apply too much steering lock at low speeds in a vehicle of this kind and the rear end will start moving around as the tyres spin away the power. Though again, that will be improved with a little cargo bed weight. All this is true of this L200, but if you allow for these limitations and compare against other pickups rather than modern SUVs, this Mitsubishi's advantages really begin to show. For a start, the steering is sharper than you'd expect it to be on a vehicle of this type, and the front end turns into bends with a lot more bite than you'd find on most pickups. Uh, this means you can drive this L200 faster and with more confidence on tighter secondary roads, something further aided by slightly more compact dimensions than you'll find on most obvious rivals. If you do find yourself pushing on a little too ambitiously, then there's a clever MASTC Mitsubishi Active Stability and Traction Control system that'll generally be able to rein things in before danger strikes. It monitors lateral g-forces from suspension movements and then tells the engine how much power it can safely offer. In town, any vehicle that's 5.29 metres in length with such restricted rear visibility is going to be occasionally difficult to manoeuvre, as this one would be without the rear view camera that you get on plush versions. It helps, though, in urban situations that the turning circle is class leading. Yes, the total radius of 5.9 metres is the same as before, but the L200 can now go from lock to lock in 3.8 turns compared to 4.3 turns before. What else? Uh, well, brakes are brilliant by pickup standards too, and on manual models you'll find a lighter clutch and a much more car-like, shorter throw gear change. Here though we're trying the 5-speed automatic gearbox, which does make the vehicle feel a little more ponderous. Steering wheel paddle shifters are provided as part of this auto package, but, well, can't really see why. Despite improvements, this isn't in any way a sporty vehicle to drive. Better to settle back and let the smooth shifting transmission do its thing. You can choose this auto option if you opt for the pokier 178 brake horsepower engine that we're trying here. Like the entry level 151 brake horsepower unit, it's a 2.4 litre DID diesel power plant that's been freshly developed for this Series 5 model to replace the previous rather inefficient old 2.5 litre DID unit. This latest common rail diesel features a lower compression ratio, which enables the engine to cope with a higher workload and, for the first time in this segment, allows a cylinder block to be fashioned from aluminium rather than steel, this alone reducing weight by 30 kilograms. Power delivery of this new unit is less switched-like than it was before. Uh, previously, it got almost nothing when the vehicle was off boost and then all the torque arrived at once. Now, the power delivery is more graduated and the turbo kicks in more smoothly. Progress is quieter in this Series 5 model too. The engine's turbocharger still whistles happily as it cuts in and out, but generally the unit itself is now more hushed, combining with the more torsionally rigid body to deliver class-leading refinement. One thing that might make you more inclined to use this L200 for longer trips and it delivers more torque than before, 380 newton meters in the 151 brake horsepower form and 430 newton meters in this 178 brake horsepower guys. And that in turn has enabled Mitsubishi to increase this vehicle's all important braked towing weight capability from 2,700 to 3,100 kilograms. Rivals like Ford's Ranger and Isuzu's D-Max can better that towing figure, but you need to remember that when those two vehicles are pulling something at maximum weight, they'll only legally be able to carry between 300 to 500 kilograms in their cargo bays. In contrast, even when this Mitsubishi is towing its full 3.1 tonnes, it'll be able to carry up to 990 kilograms of payload, hence its class-leading 490 kilogram combined carrying and towing capacity showing. That's a far more crucial stat than rest to 62 miles an hour times or maximum speed figures. But for completion, I'll give you those as well. For the 151 brake horsepower model, you're looking at 12.2 seconds and 105 miles an hour, while this 178 brake horsepower variant improves that to 10.4 seconds and 111 miles per hour. That's two seconds quicker than the old Series 4 model could manage. I should point out that those figures apply to variants with a manual gearbox. This automatic version records 11.8 seconds and 109 miles per hour. 
time to talk about four-wheel drive and point out that with this generation L200, Mitsubishi still hasn't dispensed with its old easy select all-wheel traction system. This lives on in the entry-level 151 brake horsepower for life model and is a setup that forces you into two-wheel drive most of the time unless you're off-road. When you're in an easy select L200, you have to manually select four-wheel drive, either in high range with locked transfer or in low range with a heavy-duty rear differential lock. For years now, though, most L200 buyers have been used to the brand's more sophisticated super select four-wheel drive setup, as used by its Shogun SUV. This much cleverer system allows you more options on tarmac. On such a paved surface, it's still possible to travel in two-wheel drive if you want to, but there's also the option, which remains unique in this class, to drive at speed in permanent four-wheel drive without the excessive wear and tear that would be generated on rival four-wheel drive systems as a result of transmission wind-up. As a result, there's real SUV-like peace of mind when conditions are a bit icy. Plus, you can use the circular uh, Super Select controller just below the gear stick to shift from two-wheel drive, 2H, to four-wheel drive, 4H, at speeds of up to 62 miles an hour if you feel conditions are getting a bit slippery. Four times when users are driving on-road in four-wheel drive, the engineers have altered the front-to-rear centre differential torque split from the 50-50 ratio used on the old Series 4 model to a rear-biased 60-40 setup here. This helps to reduce understeer in tight bends, improves traction while accelerating, and provides more stability when towing, something that will also be aided by a standard trailer stability system. Of course, off-road in a Super Select equipped L200, this Mitsubishi will be just as capable as ever, with high-range 4HLC and low-range 4LLC locked transfer options that are selectable when stationary and enable full delivery of torque to every wheel, regardless of obstacles. For really tough conditions, you'll want the second 4LLC setting, which will ease you out of wherever you've stuck yourself as all the wheels turn together and power is distributed equally front to rear. The 205 millimetres of ground clearance you get on most models will help here, as will an approach angle of 30 degrees, a departure angle of 25 degrees and a ramp breakover angle of 23 degrees. At first glance, this fifth generation L200 double cab pickup seems little more than an evolution of its successful predecessor. Look a little closer though and you'll discover that it's actually more than 80% new. Only three sections of floor and the main chassis rails haven't been carried over from before. The shape's more efficient too, this now the most aerodynamic double cab that you can buy. This L200 was the first pickup to actively target SUV buyers as well as tradespeople. And since 2006, it's been styled to reflect that approach, primarily through this, the curving so-called J-line that separates the cabin from the cargo bed. This feature gives this Mitsubishi a more car-like, lifestyle-orientated look than you get from squarer, boxier rivals. And it's been made more noticeable with this 5 Series L200 model. The designer's decision to carry forward this feature is the main reason why the profile of this pickup is so similar to that of its predecessor. But move to the front and owners familiar with the previous Series 4 version will find that changes have been made. Avoid entry-level trim and you get this chromed grille that offers a more upmarket look this time around. It flows into powerful HID headlights and on a top model like this one feature integrated LED daytime running lights and bi-xenon projectors. At the back, rear combination lamps wrap around the sides of the cargo bed for what Mitsubishi hopes is a more three-dimensional look. As you can see, this is a double cab pickup, that being the body style that the L200 range is based around, and the one that almost all buyers in this segment now tend to want. However, customers with tighter budgets and more utilitarian uses in mind can also talk to their dealers about a single cab variant, or even a club cab model which has occasional rear seating if you need it. All are based on the same tougher, more torsionally rigid underpinnings that have been used this time around. Time to take a seat inside. Now, at first glance, those familiar with previous generation models might not feel that very much has changed, but once you start to look around, key improvements begin to become apparent. 
Primarily, it's all a bit more car-like, with less of the feel that other pickups give you of being sat in a commercial vehicle. And to that end, the dash has more depth this time around. And though it's still trimmed in hard-wearing plastic, the material seems of higher quality and is enhanced on plusher models like this one by splashes of silver and piano black trim. The design of the fascia is more like an SUV than an LCV2, with a smart, high-mounted touchscreen on the two top models that includes navigation and an incorporated rear-view camera display. This top Barbarian model features plush leather trim, but right across the range it's easy to get comfortable thanks not only to a height adjustable driver's seat that's been redesigned for greater support, but also to a rare feature in this segment, a steering wheel that adjusts for both reach and rake. Like the gear knob, it's leather stitched and through it you view a clear set of dials separated by an information display and above that a graphic designating whether drive is uh, going to all four wheels or only the two at the rear. Practicality seems to have been reasonably well thought through. The door bins and glove box aren't particularly big, but there's a reasonably sized storage compartment uh, between the seats and you get this removable tray on the centre console. That's ideal for a phone or a wallet. You also get chunky grab handles and an overhead compartment for your sunglasses. Plus um, bottle holders that can take one litre plastic bottles and which have been set at an incline so that your beverage will be held in place even when you're travelling over bumpy roads. Another nice touch is this convenience hook on the front seat head restraint uh, which is designed for small shopping bags. We also like the effectiveness of the redesigned dual zone air conditioning system which is 30% quicker at cooling the cabin than it was before. Let's take a seat in the back. Now that is not always a pleasant experience in a double cab pickup where rear seat occupants are often made to feel like second class citizens as they endure painfully upright backrests and restricted legroom. It wasn't so long ago that most pickups didn't even supply a proper three point belt for the middle passenger. That's an unacceptable failing if you happen to be transporting three kids. Mitsubishi has long tried to provide pickup buyers with something better than this and has improved things again with this Series 5 model. The main change is that the total cabin zone of this vehicle is bigger this time around. The 1,745mm total length making it 56mm longer than a rival Toyota Hilux and a massive 103mm longer than a Volkswagen Amarok. Now that isn't something you especially notice at the front, but it makes a big difference here at the rear when it comes to legroom, especially of course on longer trips. As a result, a six foot adult can comfortably sit behind a similarly sized driver, although the low seating position does mean that they have to bunch their knees up a bit. The seat backs are still more upright than they would be in a normal car, but the 25 degree reclining angle isn't too bad by pickup standards, and headrooms are touched better than it was before. The cushions feature the expected trio of three point belts, and behind these seats, uh, there's room to store tools and any other items that you might want to keep out of sight. The Series 5 L200 range is primarily based around this double cab body style, although you can also talk to your dealer about a single cab variant or even a club cab model with occasional rear seating. It's a double cab version we're focusing on here though, the only body shape really targeted for leisure use as well as industrial purposes. In this form, the L200 is priced in the usual 20 to £25,000 bracket, figures that of course exclude VAT. I say of course because the fleets and small businesses who buy nearly all L200s are VAT exempt, so there's no point in quoting an inclusive total. All models get a 2.4 litre Myvec diesel engine, but in the entry level 4 Life variant, it's supplied in detuned 151 brake horsepower form. Find the extra £1,000 that Mitsubishi asked to trade up to the Titan model, and you get the full fat 178 brake horsepower unit paired with a more sophisticated Super Select four wheel drive system. If you want the option of mating this power plant to the five speed automatic gearbox we're trying here, then you'll need to choose between the two plushest versions, either the Warrior model or this top leather lined Barbarian variant. In each case, auto transmission is offered at a £1,400 premium. Onto the value proposition those prices represent. 
And Mitsubishi has never tried to offer the cheapest option in the pickup segment. But if you look at what you get in terms of equipment and capability, the L200 represents decent value. As for rivals, well, the segment's cheapest pickup is the Great Wall Steed, but most users discount that on the basis of performance, build quality and restricted towing capacity. Tougher opposition for Mitsubishi comes from Isuzu's D-Max and Ford's Ranger, vehicles that would save you between £1,000 and £2,000 on an L200, although that figure would narrow if you were to equip those two models to the standard provided across the range here. The base 2.5 litre version of Toyota's Hilux would also save you a little, but its lower power output will restrict that all-important brake towing capacity. Sort that out by specifying the Pokia 3-litre D4D Hilux model, and you'll pay much the same as you would for an equivalent 178 brake horsepower version of this Mitsubishi. As for Volkswagen's Amarok and the Nissan MP300 Navara, well, those pickups have been pretty closely priced matched against this L200 right across the range. Mitsubishi reckons that the specification of this vehicle gives it an advantage over the various rivals I've just mentioned. So let's check that out in detail. Those really wanting this L200 to work for its living may quite possibly be happy with the entry-level for life variant. After all, it comes with the heavy-duty suspension, the rear differential lock and auto stop-and-go engine start-stop system that you don't get further up the range. Plus, there are all the main equipment items you really need. Things like 16-inch alloy wheels, daytime running lights, tubular side steps, all-round electric windows, powered heated mirrors, uh, remote keyless entry and hill start assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Inside, 4Life trim gives you air conditioning, cruise control with a speed limiter, a driver's seat height adjustment, a USB socket and a decent quality four-speaker stereo that you can control from the leather-trimmed multifunction steering wheel. The problem though with buying an L200 at 4 life level is that you're limited to the lower powered 151 brake horsepower engine and the older tech easy select four wheel drive system. Which is why so many potential buyers will want to find that extra thousand pound premium to upgrade themselves into Titan trim. That gets you the Pokia 178 brake horsepower power plant mated to a more sophisticated super select four wheel drive system that makes this the only model in the segment that can be driven permanently in four-wheel drive on tarmac. The Titan model also features larger 17-inch wheels, front fog lights, privacy glass, auto headlamps and wipers, and keyless entry with push-button start. Plus, dual-zone air conditioning, a better quality six-speaker DAB stereo, a multi-information dash display, chromed exterior touches, and upgraded cabin trim. Should you go further up the range than that? Well, as I mentioned at the beginning, if you want an automatic gearbox, you're going to have to, for the option of this feature is limited to the top Warrior and Barbarian variants. Find a VAT exclusive £23,000 budget and you can get yourself a Warrior spec L200, complete with satellite navigation, electric heated seats and bison on headlamps with LED daytime running lights. For not much more, this top Barbarian model adds premium leather trim, LED mood lighting, puddle lamps, chrome tail light surrounds and a sports mesh front grille. On to options. Now we'd certainly want a load bed liner like the one that's been fitted here. And if you're going to be leaving potentially valuable items in the cargo area, you're going to need a hard top too. They're available with and without windows. Alternatively, you could consider a tonneau cover, something that you can specify in retractable or hard type form. Some customers will like the idea of stainless steel sports styling bars too. Roof carriers are available for bikes and surfboards and skis. And of course, there are the usual optional tow bars, seat covers and floor mats. We should talk about the class-leading safety standards too. Incorporating Mitsubishi's so-called RISE, or Reinforced Impact Safety Evolution technology, the Series 5 model's body combines a strong ladder frame chassis, front crumple zones and strategic points of reinforcement for extra cabin protection. As you'd expect from a modern pickup, there's ABS braking with electronic brake force distribution to adjust the level of braking power between front and rear wheel depending on the load. This L200 though goes further. An additional brake assist setup helps in panic stops that will be advertised to following motorists via an emergency stop signal system that flashes the hazard lights to warn them. 
And all models get a system that recognises when the accelerator and the brake pedals are being pressed and gives priority to the braking system that will avoid accidental acceleration. We like this Mitsubishi's ASTC Active Stability and Traction Control System too, there to independently regulate braking force to the wheels in a way that maintains stability. ASTC also optimises traction whenever a wheel spin is detected by controlling the engine output and seamlessly applying brake force to the spinning wheels. We should also mention the trailer stability assist setup that helps to prevent trailer snaking and the fact that provided you avoid entry level trim you'll also get a very unusual feature in this class, a lane departure warning system that's able to alert dozy drivers who might be veering out of their lanes on the highway. Should all this be insufficient to prevent an accident, then you'll be glad of another rare fitment in this sector, a driver's knee bag that works with standard twin front and side airbags in the cabin. Plus, there's a steering column designed to retract in a collision to protect your body. OK, time to put some more of Mitsubishi's claims to the test. Specifically this one. How can this truck claim to be the most practical choice in the class when other rivals offer slightly larger cargo beds and payload capacities? Well, we're going to find out. And let's start here. On a pickup, a tailgate is a tailgate, isn't it? Actually, no. On rivals, this gate will immediately fall back if someone just grabs the handle and unlocks it, which could cause injuries to children in particular. It's a heavy thing. In this case, though, the hinge centre is set at the rear position against the gravity of the gate, so the panel won't as easily fall back unexpectedly. Uh, top models like this one can even get a damped falling mechanism, perhaps to make up for the fact that the tailgate won't retract all the way down, as it would do on a base model, because of the addition of this uh, useful step. Let's retract the thing. Here at the business end, you're faced with a cargo bed 475 millimetres deep. That's 15 millimetres deeper than the previous Series 4 model and 1,470 millimetres in both length and width. In this area, you'd be able to take a payload of up to 1,045 kilos. Most rivals can better these figures, but that, according to Mitsubishi, doesn't tell the whole story. The brand points out that the stat that really matters to many operators is the one for combined carrying and towing capacity, an area in which this Series 5 L200 is indisputably a class leader. Combine the cargo area capacity with this model's prodigious braked towing capability of up to 3,100 kilograms, and you'll be able to lug up to 4,090 kilograms. That's 77 kilograms more than an Isuzu D-Max and around 230 kilograms more than a Toyota Hilux or a Volkswagen Amarok. In other words, if you want to load the back up with enough beach pebbles to cover your driveway at the same time as you're towing your boat home, then that's no problem. Here we've got a cargo bed liner, but even if you do without that, you get useful vertical grooves in the bed floor that more easily allow you to partition your loads and to prevent small items from moving around in transit. Uh, there are six load lashing points for tying things down and, as you'd expect, there's enough width between the wheel arches for you to slide in a Euro pallet. From our point of view, uh, one disappointment is that the electrically retracting rear window that featured on the previous model hasn't been carried forward into this one. Uh, that allowed longer items to poke through into the cab. The tailgate isn't lockable, well that's not much point when you, people could just lift stuff out anyway, but a range of optional hard tops and tonneau covers are available and they could solve that problem for you if it's an issue. On to running costs. The old L200 Series 4 model managed only 34 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and smoky CO2 emissions of between 218 and 248 grams per kilometre. That simply wasn't good enough, particularly in an era that in recent times has seen rivals like Ford's Ranger and Nissan's MP300 Navara dramatically up their game in terms of fuel consumption and CO2 efficiency. Fortunately for Mitsubishi, this L200 Series 5 model now also meets this improved standard thanks to its new 2.4-litre Myvec diesel engines, lower compression ratio and lighter aluminium construction. The result is a huge improvement in the figures. 
This pickup's now a bigger 75-litre fuel tank, promising a greater driving range of nearly 700 miles. To be specific, it now manages 44.1 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 169 grams per kilometre of CO2 in 4-life 151 brake horsepower form, a variant that comes with Mitsubishi's auto stop-and-go engine start-stop system. Disappointingly, the more powerful 171 brake horsepower engine does without this feature, although that doesn't seem to have a huge effect on the bottom line. This Pokia model, managing 42.8 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 173 grams per kilometre of CO2. What does have a big impact is mating this unit to Mitsubishi's five-speed auto gearbox. Do that and the figures fall to 39.2 miles per gallon and 189 grams per kilometre. Mind you, even in that case, you'd still be doing a lot better than you would be in comparable rivals like the Isuzu D-Max, Toyota Hilux or Volkswagen Amarok. Expect this Mitsubishi to travel around six to seven miles further on every gallon than pickups like those. And it's about 15 to 20% cleaner than that Trio 2, which could be important if, or more likely when, the Treasury starts to rate pickups under the same kind of CO2-based personal taxation system that's used for ordinary cars. Currently, benefiting kind taxation on this kind of pickup is a flat rate of £3,150, regardless of emissions. And business users will pay at 20%, 40% or 45% rates, depending on their income. This applies because this L200 has a payload of over 1,000 kilograms, so it qualifies for lower commercial vehicle company car tax rates. What else? Well, all L200s get a 12-year anti-corrosion warranty and the peace of mind of the so-called Me and My Mitsubishi cover. Now, this includes a warranty that's quite long, five years in total, although it is restricted to 62,500 miles. Still, the cover does include a Mitsubishi assistance package that provides vehicle recovery in the event of an accident or breakdown and will also help if your L200 is stolen or vandalised. The programme will also deal with the little things too, like uh, filling up with the wrong kind of fuel, for example, and applies 24-7 in over 30 countries throughout Europe. Should you have an accident, there's also a Mitsubishi First customer support service to sort things out for you. Service intervals are a bit better than they were before, though at every 12,500 miles or two years, they do seem a bit short by car standards. Still, it'll certainly help that the new engine uses a timing chain that'll never need replacing, and it can go longer intervals between engine coolant changes and inspections for things like valve clearance. Plus, L200 buyers can budget ahead for maintenance costs by investing in a Mitsubishi service plan at point of purchase, which, for a modest sum, will cover them for scheduled garage visits, either for up to three years or for up to five years. Residual value should be pretty strong. Uh, the previous model commonly managed to return over 40% of its original purchase price after the industry standard three-year, 60,000-mile operating period. And this Series 5 version should certainly match or even improve upon that. Independent experts reckon that the figures will vary between 41.8% and 45.5%, depending on the variant you're looking at. Finally, I'll tell you about insurance, which is rated at Group 12E for the base 4-life variant and 13E for all the other models. There's no doubt that the Series 5 model changes have improved this L200 in all key areas. That class-leading combined carrying and towing capacity will catch the attention of many potential buyers, and it'll also help that running costs are as low as you'll get in this class. Of all the updates, though, it's the improvements to driving dynamics that we reckon potential owners will notice most. This vehicle was always good off-road. On tarmac, though, like many pickups, it wasn't that easy to live with. This fifth generation version is far better in this regard, offering less body roll, a more comfortable ride and better refinement for its more responsive 2.4 litre DID diesel engine. All right, it still isn't what you call car-like, but there's no doubt that the changes have made a big difference to the proposition on offer here. As a result, this Mitsubishi is easier to envisage as an only car if you need a tough working vehicle for the week that can also transport the family around at weekends. True, it certainly isn't perfect. 
For a start, the L200 isn't as affordable as it used to be. Many, though, will feel that the Series 5 improvements make that a price worth paying, even though this model can still be bettered by other rivals in terms of cargo bed size and payload. In summary, then, you can see why so many pickup buyers choose this one, whether their need is to transport quad bikes and surfboards or hardcore and shovels. As before, it's tough, good looking, and offers a wide range of choice, but now it's that bit easier to live with too. All of which, more than ever, makes this Mitsubishi a vehicle that customers in this segment can't ignore.